Hi, uh, this is Lee Fly Bushcraft. Um, today we're going to do another uh, tree ident vid. Uh, we're going to do the um, hawthorn today. Um, and again, we'll basically we'll get set up. I've got a cameraman today. Uh, we've got Kilo. Give you a wobble. Um, so yeah, it'll obviously make it easier for me today. So yeah, we'll get set up and we'll get talking about the hawthorn. Right, so then the Hawthorn, um, sorry if I pronounce this wrong, um, but it's Critagius Monoginia, I'll flash that up on the uh, on the bottom, again don't comment if that's wrong because um, uh, I find it hard to do English, never mind uh, Latin. So the name Hawthorn is thought to mean hedge thorn, Haga or Haw, um, being the old English for hedge or enclosure. Uh, other names for the Hawthorn are Skew, which is Old Irish, Pawn, which is Old Norse, uh, Hag, which is Old English, and then you've got the Hagthorn, Aisy Tree, um, Quickthorn, Whitethorn, White Mag, White May, you've got absolute loads, May Blossom, uh, a Sogs and everything like that. So. Uh, that's just a few different names for the Hawthorn. Uh, it is actually in the Rose family. It belongs to the Rose family, does the Hawthorn. So, uh, and it is a hardwood. It is deciduous. It's classified as a hardwood. So the stats, basically, on the, um, the Hawthorn. We'll just move a little bit closer in so that you can uh, just kind of see the... Uh, a little bit closer. So the stats for it, it grows to, on average, 12 to 15 metres high. Um, a statue uh, hawthorn, like the one you see here, because um, this is not part of a hedge or woodland or anything like that, um, a statue hawthorn can live up to 300 years on its own. Um, but obviously, with, with it being in a hedge, it can last a lot, the, the actual hedge can last a lot longer because it will reseed itself. Um, and you know, being part of a hedge, what, what, you, what you tend to find is you actually, um, you're coppicing it all the time, or a form of coppicing, uh, and as we know that coppicing uh, prolongs the life of the hawthorn, or any tree. Uh, so what I'll do is, I'll put up now a picture of the leaves, the flowers, fruits, and all that kind of stuff. So uh, cue the music. <laughs> Hawthorn is often known uh, as May because it's been really traditionally flowered in May um, and used for May, May Day decorations and, and stuff like that. Um, but actually recently, uh, last 50, 60 years, it's, it's been known to flower a lot earlier than that and even in the, the last weeks of March, um, first weeks of April, it, it's... Uh, it's, it's actually been known to flower, so. Um, now, the hawthorn is a credibly hardy plant. Um, it can be taken back literally to a stump and it will come back fighting. Um, 
really this is why it's been used for hedges um, it's got a uh, uh, a defensive mechanism inside it which basically anything that gets cut uh, will come back and the uh, the growth is, 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 is twice as strong and I'll actually just show you that now you can see here that they're quite, they're quite spiky um, obviously this is a pathway and it's been taken off here and here and here it's actually not been taken off in the right spot really this one is not too bad it should have been really taken off another half inch in and you can see that there's not a lot of growth really off, off this one where these three here have not been taken off in the right spot they should have been taken off a lot maybe this one should have been taken off to there and this one uh, a lot further back so you, first of all we're getting growth out of it and if, if uh, key just, just, just comes around the side here Another example of this one is this. This one should have been taken off here at the branch collar, um, taken off halfway up, and we've got all this growth. Now the thing is with this growth is it tends to be really spiky, and this is the defence mechanism that I was talking about before. Is that if anything gets would nibble on that like that, and make it a, a rough job, then that this is going to come back even spikier. But what you will find at the top of the tree is it's not that spiky. Um, the tree doesn't need to be, um, it's just simply because everything's nibbling it down on the ground and, and nothing much is nibbling it up there. So it doesn't have to throw out these spikes. I mean, even if you get halfway down there, just on this branch here, you can see that that's different to what we've just been looking at. You know, there's a rake of spikes down here, but not up here. So this is one of the main reasons why hawthorn was, uh, is used for um, is used for a hedge it chucks out a lot of spikes to keep the cattle in but also it's a very hardy plant so um, I could literally take this down to six inch above the ground and it would come back now to lay a hedge how, how you would do is you would leave it to go to a certain amount and then you cut three quarters of the way through or 80% of the way through and then fold it over that would mean that the the, the, tr uh, the hawthorn will still live because you've got a little bit still connected in, but then it will also throw out a load more like this. I mean, we can imagine another hawthorn here being cut and felled over the top of this. Then the hawthorn going through that, that makes a very good strong base for, for a hedge. Um, you can't do this with just any, anything because um, literally it would die. like I explained before if you um, do a really rough don't worry I'll clean these up but if you did a really rough job you see that now with the big gaping wound if I did that now really rough you can see all these bits out here like that like that You can see how all this is rough, it's all snapped in different ways and this, that and the other. That would then produce a lot more growth as well as spikes. And it's a, basically a way of the hawthorn fighting back, sticking two fingers up, whatever. Um, if I basically came, which I'm about to do, and took these off, nicely like that so nice and smooth to the tree the tree will actually not realize it's gone and just crack on like normal so this system here I would do if I want more spikes and more growth and this system here is what I would do if I don't want it to go back again, e.g. if there was a house near there. So I'll show a picture of the um, flailing, and this is why that farmers make such a rough job of cutting the uh, of cutting the hedge. It's it's actually 
on purpose and it just uh, it kicks the defense mechanism of the tree um, into, into, into touch really. So. So the timber, um, so we're going to use it now. The whole form wood uh, is extremely tough um, and, and extremely hard wood. Um, it was used for walking sticks, tool handles, uh, engraving and turning, obviously because of the, uh, the hardness of the wood. Um, and, it, and, and it's got a really fine grain to it. It's a bit of a slow growing uh, uh, tree. And it, and it polishes up really, really well. So, um, yeah, good for knife scales and, and, and things like that. Now, it also um, makes uh, excellent fuel. Um, in fact, it's actually known to make the hottest uh, wood fire known uh, and con considered more desirable uh, than oak. Um, for things like oven heating and, and, and things like that um, and, and obviously when charcoal is made uh, from hawthorn it was traditionally used to uh, melt pig iron and it was said that it could melt pig iron without the aid of a blast which is uh, quite a remarkable uh, thing if anybody's watched the uh, Dave Canterbury um, Pathfinder School on the uh, blacksmithing um, series you'd see that he's actually done um, a wild, um, or, or sorry, should I say an outdoor um, furnace. So using a bit of hawthorn um, would, have done him, would have done him the world of good, really. Hawthorn is edible. Uh, the young leaves and buds are said to have a kind of a nutty taste to them. Uh, I'll probably be trying some of them later on this year. Um, and it can actually be used for tea. Uh, the berries, they can be used to make into a jelly. They can also be used to make wines, liqueurs uh, and ketchups as well. Uh, the Chinese use for hawthorn is in the digestive system and it's suggested that the use of hawthorn eases the digestion of meat and greasy foods. Now hawthorn berries also um, have an antioxidant property uh, and they are a great way of getting, uh, getting rid of any free radicals uh, that can damage cells in the body and it's also been used as a sedative which is why it's said to be beneficial for those uh, anxious nervous or stressed out which is uh, a, a quite good thing now using hawthorn berries are shown to be beneficial in case uh, uh, of congestive heart failure and various um, heart uh, rhythms and, and disturbances such as arrhythmia and uh, heart palpitations and as such it's mainly been used as a cardiac tonic in, uh, in uh, functional heart problems. Now also studies have shown that the berries are excellent for, um, for both prevention and treatment of coronary heart disease. When used on a regular basis it can be used for high and low blood pressures for um, it has a strengthening action on the heart. Um, now the precautions for hawthorn. Hawthorn should only be used in prescribed by your doctor, really. Uh, only if your doctor advises you to. Uh, women who are pregnant or breastfeeding should only take hawthorn as well on doctors um, say so, really. Um, Patients who are sensitive to any other types of rose family plants should not take the hawthorn as well. Folklore, uh, hawthorn has more connections with ancient belief and traditions than any other tree really. Um, it's one of the sacred trees of Wicca, witchcraft, and is associated with spring uh, celebration. The main spring celebration is that of May Day, which honours uh, the sun god, Belanus, I'll put I'll put that up. I'm not sure how, if that's the correct um, pronunciation of his name, Belanus. Um, and his festival c commences on the first day of the hawthorn blossomed, um, which would have been around May. Um, but like I say, today it's, it, it, it's celebrated on the first of May. Irish folklore. Um, 
stated that the hawthorn was referred to as the furry bush and it was considered bad luck to cut uh, the hawthorn in fear of offending the furries that lived inside the tree. However, during May Day celebrations, uh, the collection of sprigs and flowers was allowed uh, for, for, like I say, decoration purposes. After which the, uh, the decorations were placed inside the home to uh, banish any evil spirits. So in ancient folklore, um, the boughs of the hawthorn uh, blossom was made into crowns for wedding couples. So the, uh, the flowers was made into a crown. So this is the hawthorn. Um, and, and like I say, I'm sorry to, to only show you one specimen of the tree. We are in a, in a woodland situation and it, it has been hard for me and uh, Kilo to find a, a hawthorn growing mound here. So uh, sorry if uh, the video was only of this one tree. Um, but yeah, so that, that just gives you a little bit of information on the, on the hawthorn. Um, and hopefully sometime this year I can show you uh, getting berries and leaves, newly sprung leaves from this and telling you exactly what they taste like. But if you find some hawthorn growing, then uh, have a nibble at the buds, have a nibble at the new shoots and uh, tell me what you think. Yeah, leave comments in at the bottom and uh, I'll see you next time.